mentally and physically. The grind of the season is right now. In another couple of weeks, you start thinking about champ week and the level of excitement picks up. But to win your conference, to improve your seating, you go on the road, you find ways to win. That's the test for Louisville today. Press Kimball runs the offense for Coach Mack in the cards. Darius Perry has played very well as of late for Louisville. And Sutton has upped his game, but there's an early turnover in Bryce. I'll tell you one way for Louisville to give this game away is to throw passes like that. You've got to value the basketball. You give extra possessions to this NC State team. You allow them to try to get out and run in transition. They're going to find a way to get a win. Number two assist guy in the ACC is Markel Johnson. Ten to shoot. Here's Devin Daniels. Working on Perry with a fall away. Tough shot. Well, the Louisville starting five doesn't change. Kimball, Perry, Sutton, Wara, and Enoch, who will alternate with Malik Williams, and there's the dribble drive for Kimball. That's too easy, though. I mean, no passes in that half-court set, and you're able to get an uncontested layup. You'll notice that uh, D.J. Funderburg starts today, and Jericho Hellams in the lineup for a fourth straight contest. There's a foul off the ball, and it's going to be on Kimball. It'll stay with the Wolfpack. On the St. Joe's grad transfer, second straight year, by the way, Louisville has had a grad transfer point guard run their offense. Markel Johnson launching. And the rebound pulled away by Enoch. And I think if you're Louisville, those are the kind of shots you want to see North Carolina State have to take on a consistent basis and try to make. How about the scoop floater from Darius Perry? How about back-to-back -back possessions where they're able to drive right into the the defense and yeah. the Devin Daniels, whose last two ball games averaging about 14 and a half points and shoot 48% from the floor, but has missed all four of his three-point shots. Out of the corner, Hellums. And a foul on Enoch. I think he got a little leverage and maybe a little grab on DJ Funderburg. A great job, though, by Funderburg to get that inside position. I mean, a lot of times when the shot goes up, you're trying to work your way back around a defensive player to get that inside position. Funderburg did an excellent job getting that position, forcing that foul. Any edge NC State can get on second chances today will be an advantage because Louisville's one of the top three teams in the ACC in the rebound margin in conference play. There's another foul inside. Funderburg. Draws the foul and this time sets that screen. And when you play NC State, you've got to realize there's going to be a ton of ball screens set. And you've got to make sure you stay attached to the roller. Do not allow them to create that space and get to the rim. That time Funderburg was able to do it. Foul on Dwayne Sutton is already the third on Louisville. And DJ Funderburg is 76% at the free throw line. You see he leads the ACC in field goal percentage in conference play. But he is also the ninth best free throw shooter in this league, Sean. Well, in conference play, too, he's leading this NC State team in points per game and rebounds. So he has been important, but they need CJ Bryce. What a careless pass. Here's Johnson and missed the dunk. Helms the recovery. Just got to finish. Daniels in tight. Left everything short. Kimball had a chance and last touched. The, you, it will belong to, uh, belong to the cards. Great steal, active hands, but you've got to be certain you get two points there. Instead, it ends up being a turnover out of bounds after the missed dunk. Yep. A little backcourt pressure. Coach Keats told us he, he likes their backcourt pressure to try to take away some of the shot clock and speed Louisville up. Cardinal, Cardinals are rare. It's two what? Two turnovers, unforced errors, really? It really three if you count yeah. the one in the backcourt. Yeah. Thunderbird. Backside rebound for the Ville. Perry got caught off the dribble and misfires. Anybody seen Jordan Warrior yet? I mean, he hasn't touched the ball offensively, so you credit NC State for that. But if you're Louisville, man had 37 the other night. Try to get him involved in this contest. He got off to a hot start, what, 21 in the first half? There's a foul inside. That's on Perry, and that's going to be four against the cards. Look, right now, if you're NC State, scores even. 
You've got four fouls. You forced three turnovers. You're feeling really good about how you've been dictating the game. You've got to be able to make some shots. Bryce misses. And every one of those, everybody will be thinking about C.J. Bryce trying to get the ball to go through the basket. You know who else will be thinking about that? C.J. Bryce. Yep, and that's the problem. Daniels scoop foul, and that's two on Perry. So Darius Perry, the junior from Marietta, Georgia, draws his second with 16.32 to go, and that is five already on the cards. And Chris Max got Ryan McMahon at the table. Um, Perry's been sensational as of late. You look at the 19 points he had last Saturday. That was a career high. First time he's had back-to-back 10-plus -back point games this season. And he's been shooting 64% from beyond the arc. So you take out an offensive weapon as Perry goes to the bench. Now, this is a team that in Louisville that's deep. And Ryan McMahon can fill it up from the outside and get it going. Daniel's got one of the two. Tom, what changes here with McMahon? He's not maybe as accomplished a defender as Perry? Very much so. And you lose a little bit of your strength, too. And then Perry's a little bit more physical. Wara, baseline, hanging shot. Sutton the rebound. Stepped on the end line, says Ted Valentine. Puts it back in the Wolfpack's hands. Probably a frustrating start for Chris Mack and his ball club here. But some of it's self-inflicted now. It is a little bit of it self-inflicted, and I like the aggressiveness of trying to attack that time by Ward. I think with Coach Mack, he's talking to the officials here a little bit. Down here, there's been a lot of touch fouls that have been called, and there haven't been at the other end of the floor yet. There's a foul on Jericho Hellams, the sophomore from St. Louis. That'll be his first. First foul on NC State. You see Chris Mack at 50 years of age from North College Hill, Ohio. Took over this Louisville program late March. Almost two years ago now. Yeah. And has done a marvelous job. He really has. I mean, it, it, where this program is at, it was number one earlier on this season. Could end up getting back there, by the way, at the end of the year if they continue to play well. Inside, knocked away. Not playing well early. Bryce. The turnover. Yep, travel on the Wolfpack. Almost four minutes gone. NC State a one point bounding, fifth in field goal percentage, but so far scoreless. Sean, as we played just better than four minutes. Hey, if you look at NC State right now with a one-point lead. That's a wide-open shot. You can't wow. give up that. Come on now. Standing in the logo, Ryan McMahon. Scouting report tells you, though, McMahon can catch and shoot from distance. And that, that was time, distance. It, well, in the pressure, though, you still got to be able to scramble back and know your personnel. Markel Johnson and the Wolfpack trailing two. Manny Bates on the floor for the first time and scores at the post. Good to see him back out on the floor. Obviously missed a couple of games with a concussion and came back the other night. Blocked a bunch of shots at five blocks in 17 minutes against North Carolina. Now he provides length and he can be disruptive on the offensive end. And then you see, I mean, the defensive end rather, excuse me, at the offensive end though, you can post him up. And then when you can get the ball inside, what that does is when you start your motion on the outside, it creates seams and gaps where you can drive and attack. Yeah. Foul is on Bates. It'll be his first, second on NC State. Manny Bates, by the way, if he gets five more block shots today, will climb into number five on a single season block shot mark. He's already set the freshman record with 58. I thought you were going to say if he gets five blocks today, we get like free food or something. I'm down for some I, free food. I know you are. I'm not aware of it. Okay. But it could be. All right. Most buildings, it's missed free throws, don't you think? <laughs> Here's Usually. McMahon. Dribbled it off his leg out of bounds. Ryan McMahon trying to make a play off the bounce. Chris Mack, McMahon, and Sutton were the two veteran guys he felt like needed to kind of be more consistent for Louisville to take that next step. And I think that's part of the reason they won seven straight. Daniels. And he knocked the rebound. It's amazing this game is tied when you think about the fact that NC State is shooting under 20% so far. David Johnson, the freshman from Louisville on the drive. The best offense for Louisville is to attack the pressure. When they've played passive, they've turned it over. When you get downhill on them, that's the third time they've been able to score inside the paint. Daniels and the Wolfpack also have Pat Andre on the floor. Out of that dead ball a moment ago. Here's Bryce still looking to snap the drought. 
Shot around miss for C.J. Bryce. That's not the look you're trying to get when you're trying to snap out of the funk. Johnson on the drive, swatted Bates, follows Sutton. Third try, fourth try, Enoch on the last two for his first basket. I'm going to go back to C.J. Bryce. You, you don't force it. You want to be aggressive, but you want to get shots that are high percentage good looks for yourself. You keep missing all of a sudden. Every time you miss a shot, you go back into your mind and start going, man, wh what do I got to do to get out of this? And you're not going to make shots when you're doubting yourself. Tend to shoot for Daniels. Four-point lead for the Cards. Nice pass. Bates got bumped and fouled. That's two on Sutton. Don't forget, three top 20 teams highlight our full day of Saturday college hoops here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Coming up, number 13, Kentucky, number 17, Auburn at 6 o'clock Eastern in a sonic blockbuster. And then number nine, Duke, is at the Dome in central New York tonight where 30-some thousand of Sean's friends will be there. I got a lot of friends. For the Orange <laughs> of Syracuse. Two great games. Yeah, Doug Sherman, Corey Alexander stand by tonight in Syracuse. The thing about Auburn is perfect 11-0 at home. And Kentucky, though, has been comfortable in road environments. Just went down last week, Texas Tech, yep. and won a huge game as part of that SEC Big 12 Challenge. Lob inside, batted away. Daniels on a ball intended for Williams. Can State take advantage? Beverly a triple. Now Louisville going to have to answer with the freshman Johnson. Had 19 in the win at Duke and kind of announced himself to the league that day. War on the cut. Still scoreless as the ACC's leading scorer. Here's Markel Johnson off the Louisville turnover. And still careless of the Louisville opponents. Thunderbird could not handle the pass. Might have been a little low for Beverly's liking. He just... Back-to-back -back possessions, looping passes, and steal out in transition. A great time to shoot three, step in, one, two, bang. Beverly loves playing against Louisville. In his two games against his home state's team, 16 points per contest, 67% from beyond the arc. But now nine of 13. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, now you were a shooter, though, from what I've been told. No. <laughs> No. Who could fill no. it up? So no that's the I got bad scout. Report. Bad scout. Samuel Williamson. That's not what I told him. I came down in these parts. I was like collected by Thunderbird. Probably. Working with you, uh, people were like man, he's a shooter. No, no. He could just flat out fill it up. Role player, Farnham. Minor role at like that. Thunderbird forced it over the top of Williams, and a foul to be called on Malik Williams. We're going to break in the action in Raleigh. One point lead for the number six. Thunderbird after the foul on Malik Williams got us to the timeout. By the way, seven fouls already on Louisville. Just over eight minutes in. And eight turnovers. Mm -hmm. This is just about being sloppy and not being focused. Samuel Williamson into the ball game. McMahon again. Can he make them pay? Sure. Too much space. That's twice now, almost the exact same location where he's been able to find wide open room, uncontested looks. Right. And for a guy who was four of his last 14, he's two for two here to start the day. From behind the line. Shooter's going to shoot. And especially when he's playing to his strengths and he knows exactly what he can do. 81% of his made field goals on the season are from beyond the arc. And digging around down low. The 23-year-old redshirt senior from Sarasota, Florida, draws his first eight now on Louisville. So NC State, who hits 71 and a half percent at the line against the conference, will go back to the strike. And Thunderbird rolls another one in. I don't know this. NC State is shooting 25 percent from the field midway through the first half, and it has a chance here on a made free throw to be a one-point game. Yeah. And that eight turnovers, eight fouls. And those are self-inflicted wounds by Louisville. Cross-court pass, Williamson. All the way to the basket, and he'll draw the foul from Thunderbird. 
Interesting to watch the progress that Samuel Williamson is making. The freshman at 6'7 from Rockwall, Texas. Has really come on, averaging about 17 minutes against the ACC, but has played 20 or more in four of their last five. Yeah, Paul being party, uh, our recruiting expert, had him as the number 24 national recruiting his ESPN top 100. A lot of expectations, high expectations. Coming in, playing on the wing outside. He has 14 points off the bench against Clemson. He had 15 earlier on this year against Indiana State. There's flashes. Those flashes will grow into consistency. And then that's when we'll talk about him on a night in and night out basis and being such a significant part of this Louisville Cardinals program. Well, he's got three double figures in his last five, too. Yep. One point of the two there, two point lead. Speaking of consistency, how about John Looney from Notre Dame? His oh, 14th wow. double double in the last 15 games. He had 28 and 10 today for the Irish. Yeah. How was he not on the Wooden Award top 25? I don't know. It's unbelievable, though, isn't it? I mean, that, I get it. People talking about Bradley Beal not being on the All Star game and Devin Booker not being in the All Star game, and they're like, well, you know, the team's not having great success. The college game, when you put up those kind of numbers, I don't care who you're playing for, you're putting in work. Yep. Sutton will be called for an offensive foul and another turnover for Louisville. Devin Daniels, a nice job against Dwayne Sutton. It's a great defensive play. Here's the question I'm going to ask as you watch this again. Why? You're passing the ball away from your own hoop. Why are you going into the chest of the defensive player, lowering your shoulder? So sudden ticketed for the foul. I can't wait later on tonight. You were originally going to be calling that North Carolina game, Boston College. Jordan Cornette on the call of that game. Yeah. With Cole, Cole Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. yeah. How about that? That'll be over on the ACC network at 6 o'clock. Thunderbird maybe tried to do too much there, Sean. Don't forget. Tonight on ABC, NBA Saturday primetime in the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid and the Sixers against Kemba Walker, Walker and the Celtics. The jump starts the coverage at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. 10 to go in the first half. What's been a pretty sloppy opening few minutes here in Raleigh for number six Louisville. Inside, Williams lost a handle on it. If you like turnovers, we got you covered. That's 10 for Louisville. Now remember, 15 forced turnovers in a game by Coach Keats team. He has a 74% win percentage. They got 10 already, and we still have half of the first half to go. Helen's a spot. And we get a whistle and foul. Ted Valentine on the baseline. Yeah. It's on Malik Williams. Wes, we were talking uh, about the NBA game coming up later on between right. the Sixers and the Celtics. Last night, the scene in Los Angeles. I'm from L.A. I live in L.A. Uh, just a moving tribute. Yep. Uh, and a job well done by everybody in the, inside the Lakers organization and LeBron James and his words last mm. night. Usher. Uh, that is, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I'm in my hotel room. I'm tearing up. Yeah. Incredible to see the way they are celebrating the life of Kobe Bryant in Los Angeles. And you're right, LeBron kind of hit the hit the notes last night. My first pickup game I ever played as a basketball player at UCLA. Kobe was on my team. He got drafted the same year I was a freshman heading into to UCLA. Oh, so, having Kobe was a good advantage. Did y'all win? Yeah, we beat the starters. <laughs> Thanks, Kobe. Yep. Yeah, I have to this. Part of the reason why there's so much emotion in L.A. is he came as a 17-year-old kid, and he grew up in front of everybody's eyes in the organization that truly matters in that town. Jordan Warren still scoreless, misses on the three. Tie game as we approach nine minutes to go first half. NC State, a lot of people think their postseason may hinge on a win here today or a win over the combination of Louisville, Duke, or Florida State. Who they all get in this building, by the way. Well, that was what made Virginia's win earlier this week so significant. Is 
to move up your place in this year. This isn't as deep as a conference, and we talked about this in the open. It's not as deep as it's been in recent years. Right. And so when you don't have the success in the non-conference and you haven't set that narrative, you've got to beat one of the knowns. And the knowns are the three teams you just listed. Helms trying to back down on Wara. With a turn over the left shoulder for Jericho Helms. Well, let's see who comes out of the funk first here, right? <laughs> Kimball with McMahon, Williamson, Wara, and Enoch. Wara still scoreless. Markel Johnson takes it. Well, they tried to skip it to Daniels, and McMahon almost got a hand in. Bryce still scoreless as well. Not anymore. Breeze. Breeze. And the crowd knows it, too. Yep. You just need to see it go through once. We'll pack in front. Williamson for the lead. Wara the score on the stick back. And for Wara, his first basket of the afternoon. Yep. Sometimes you got to go create it yourself. You know, you think they're, they're shading their defense to him. They're not helping off of him. Thunderbird gets his first field goal. He's seven of eight at the line. As NC State returns to the advantage. Enoch lost it, last touch by State. Well, we'll see it at Press Bowl here, Sean. Hey, you think about Michigan State, would have been in the halftime speech with Tom Enzo, trailing by 16, responding to start the second half on a 20 to seven stretch. The guys we were just talking about, yeah, you look at teams like Michigan State, still a national championship contender, maybe because of Cassius Winston, because of Tom Izzo and their experience. McMahon's been sensational. Three for three from behind the line. And Louisville right back in front on one swing from Ryan McMahon. It's hard to guard that now. The game's transition, obviously, over the last couple of years to be a it's not just the NBA, it's the Shooters League. It, it's trickled down to the college game, and McMahon can really fill it up from the outside. Kimball trying to make a move. That'll be a block on Helms. And, and here's the thing about McMahon so far this afternoon. It's not that Louisville hasn't had success in their half-court sets. They're shooting 50% from the field. They've turnovers. had success. It's the turnovers that have absolutely derailed them so far in this game from having a seven to eight point lead and that and the fouls at the other end. Well, they got 10 turnovers. NC State's only got seven points off the 10 though, Sean. But it's empty possessions. The difference is instead of having an eight point lead, right. it's a one point game. Skip back in another three. Uh, you four might for four. Up. You might not want to give him space and you might want to be there on the catch. How many more does he have to hit before NC State figures that out? Well, we were talking this morning about he's old school now. I mean, he's got the, the textbook stuff you read about. When he comes it loose, and that got swatted away. And they're going to talk about it. Ted Valentine and Sean Hull are gathering their thoughts here. Offensive foul on Daniels. McMahon doing a great job defensively sliding in. The officials want to make sure. He is ready on the catch, and that's the one thing that's always impressed me about him is his feet are set, and he is loaded to go straight up and knock down the shot. Kevin Keats now. A lot of times you see guys standing straight up, and then they have to go down right. and then come back up, or they do a sidestep. McMahon gets his feet, one, two, boom, on the catch, going straight up.
Kimball. Now here's War. Remember just that layup for his only basket. Might have forced that one too, and it's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the cards. Well, you have Beverly on you there. The size advantage, athleticism to, to shot fake and rip and go is what he should have done. He settled for the perimeter shot that time. Yep. Four point lead for the cards. Coming up on five minutes to play in the first half. Andre, grad transfer from Lehigh. Now Beverly, 10 to shoot. Here's Andre, he's got range. And the rebound for Enoch. Williamson, got baseline around Andre, tried to slip it back and turned it over. Johnson. I get the feeling this might be a fairly big 438 for NC State. Johnson's whirling in the lane, and then Williamson and Wara around the rim. And wait a second, last touch by NC State, says this crew here, so it'll belong to the cards. Well, you mentioned the final four and a half minutes here. And it kind of has a sense right now that if Louisville just values the basketball a little bit, Oh my. Wow. We'd like to welcome you to the Ryan McMahon show. Yep. Mr. McMahon, the XFL starts next week. Go in, feels how pure it is, and when you play with that confidence and you get this rhythm, and that was just careless by North Carolina State. I mean, that was a non-pressured exchange. But when a shooter has that much rhythm and they play with that kind of bounce, that kind of emotion, man, you can see a big afternoon. And if, if I'm on the floor right now, I'm going to try to see if we can free up number 30 and get him the ball again. Right. Don't worry about the preseason ACC player of the year. Let's get the kid from Sarasota to rock. Markel Johnson. Defending it there. Here's War on the switch. Coach is, by the way, telling Daniels to extend out. And the foul on Markel for the reach will be his first. I I'll tell you what McMahon has done now. And I'm watching the assistant coaches here of NC State on this last possession. After that, that handoff exchange between Wara and McMahon, the coaches have said, hey, you got to push out more. Well, what that does is it means the defense is a step or two further away from help, which means you're now getting Wara in a one-on-one -on -one matchup on an isolated island. And you have to like that advantage. Foul on Johnson. Tough shot through traffic. Thunderbird the rebound. <laughs> NC State again kind of fighting it offensively a little bit. Bryce against Williamson. Long three. Thought too long. And you're a shooter and you're on the outside and you're struggling like Bryce has over the last couple weeks. You've got to catch it and let it go. McMahon, six oh, for oh. six. And that's a career high in triples. And he's just shaking his head. Find him again. Lead is 10 for the cards. Beverly baseline. Enoch finally gathers it. McMahon crossed the midcourt line, waving to his teammates. Give me the rock. Enoch at the rim. We mentioned at 430 how this could be a pivotal stretch for NC State. First half was six. He's got a season high in points. Now with 18. And the Phil's got a 12-point lead. In a game that was just kind of slogging its way through the first 20 minutes. Johnson trying to get NC State an answer. Markel Johnson's first point. He's at his best coming downhill and elevating up in the paint when he's on balance. McMahon to Williamson and then poked away from behind. And last touched by Markel Johnson will stay with the cards. Don't forget, coming up Sunday morning, 3.30 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN, the ESPN app, the Australian Open Men's Championship between number five, Dominic Team and number two, Novak Djokovic team looking for his first major while the defending champs won the event a record seven times.
fantastic finish. The Joker usually closes things out when he gets there. Yep. Pretty exciting ladies final earlier this morning. Rebound on the backside, Laura. NC State 28% from the floor as David Johnson gets to the rim again. The Louisville shooting better than 52% from the field now. Mm. Yeah, they've managed their turnovers here in the last couple of minutes. They're executing, obviously, the McMahon has been huge. Johnson, a back rim miss. Aurora pulls it away. Crowd wanted a foul on the contact. Bryce tried to poke it from behind. Jordan Aurora commits the foul. Free throws coming for Louisville on the one and one. They're just too easy, though. Look at the drive. Where's the help side? Where's the pinch in? Not seeing it, Louisville able to exploit it. And Jordan Wara to the line, 77%, or seventh best free throw shooter in the ACC at 79%. Now here's the good thing about Louisville's roster, is that you have a player like Wara, and yeah, he's coming off that huge game, that 37 versus BC. We mentioned it off the top, though. In the three previous games before that, he struggled. He struggled this afternoon. The team isn't struggling, though. Right. And then when I talked to Coach Mack at Schumer today, I asked him, but I said, listen, he's not putting pressure on himself. He's just trying to find a way to impact winning. And even in the games where his shooting percentage has dropped, he's making winning basketball plays for us. Lead is ballooned to 14. That's a, that's a carry. Foul on Enoch. It'll be his second. By the way, Louisville now has four guys with two fouls. Enoch joins Sutton, Perry, and Malik Williams all with two. And here's Johnson to the line, the senior from Cleveland. Interesting to visit with Kevin Keats before the game about Markel Johnson, who is sixth in the ACC in conference play in assist to turnover ratio. And he was quick to point to us. He said, yeah, you know, he averages six assists. He said, but we've got to watch the turnover numbers. And he struggled with some of the turnovers, and he's telegraphed some of his passes in recent games. He's had eight turnovers in the last two contests. Yep. Free throws for Johnson. Give him four, but the lead 13 for Louisville. Final 70 seconds of the opening half. Hard drive and another basket for the freshman Johnson. Well, there's a lot to like about him, Sean. A straight line drive, on balance, strong finish. Markell, Devin Daniels turned it over. Here's David Johnson with Samuel Williamson in transition. Nice feed, Wara, who draws the foul. And that will be ticketed to Bryce. What a close to the first half, though. Mm -hmm. And Jordan Wara has got four and didn't scratch until about seven minutes left to go. Not been a great half from a scoring perspective for him, but the cards are going to take a double-figure lead to the locker room. And that, as I asked Coach Mack, what are you been most pleased about as you kind of get to that halfway point of conference play? He says, look, our depth is really starting to show up. Yep. And today is a prime example of that. Perry picks up some foul troubles. He had some big games to talk about last Saturday, career high for him. He picks up two fouls, goes to the bench. It's a next guy up mentality right now for Louisville. Do you think their depth is underrated too? I do. Yeah. It, it, it's knowing your role and being comfortable and accepting it and oh, doing what you need to do. Pretty move, Markel Johnson's second field goal. Has six, but the lead 15 in the final half minute. seconds. McMahon's going to be the story of the opening 20 minutes. Five seconds. McMahon, has he still got the vibe? There's his first miss. Well, NC State, by the way, the 21 players wow. in this game. Four from UConn, three from Oregon. Mm. Pretty solid work there, huh? Should be an unbelievable atmosphere. Monday night, 7 o'clock on ESPN2.
NC State trails 15 as we go to the second half, and Devin Daniels trying to get the Wolfpack started. What did Coach Keats say to you? You asked him one question. What it, what it breaks this whole game down to one simple thing. What did you say it came down to? Put the ball in the basket? Yeah. His team shot 28% in the first half. Yeah. At home. Well, the other concerning part has got to be their five of their last 29 from three. If you count Monday night's ball game against Carolina in the first half here today. And a hell ball that will stay with Louisville. Four on the shot clock. Got to get a quick hitter on this out of bounds underneath. And I mentioned War struggling from the field. He just won a six, but making winning plays. How about six rebounds? Two of them with the offensive end. Yeah. Plus an assist. Here he comes off a screen. And that got knocked away by Daniels. Two on the shot clock now. If Chris, that, if Chris that Mack's was, attention to detail, by the way, going to be checked here. If that was a quick hitter, number one, here comes even a quicker hitter. <laughs> <laughs> on this play, I'd look for, for Perry. I think War use him as a decoy and then get the ball to Perry. Good call, Perry. Missed everything. Shot clock violation. You know the defense is going to be attracted though to Jordan War and Perry being out on the floor. You want to get him reengaged in this game. Was limited with his minutes in the first half due yep. to foul trouble. Sure was. Only played about three and a half minutes and picking up the two fouls. Minute gone here in the second half. Johnson worked his way into the paint but couldn't finish it. Fresh Kimball, the grad transfer from St. Joe's. Jordan Warren missed. Sutton cleans it up and scores. And that was an area that Coach Mack thought they could maybe exploit. Now, North Carolina State, not a great rebounding team. Could you get on the offensive glass and get some second chance points? They got beat on the offensive boards in the first 20. And there is a foul. Against Dwayne Sutton, that'll be his third, first on the bill here in the second half. You mentioned the rebounding. Louisville is third in rebound margin in ACC play. NC State is ninth. It's almost like doubling down when you get a second chance offensively, if you're the Cards. Well, and I think that that's one of those discussion points at halftime when you have a 15-point lead. And besides saying Ryan McMahon, you were fantastic. You start going through and say, hey, if we're the number six team in the country, we need to come out in the second half and we need to clean things up. We need to value the basketball better than they did in the first 20 minutes. We need to rebound the ball better than we did in the first 20 minutes. And you start focusing on those areas and give your team two to three bullet points that they can take with them back out on the floor. And then you want to see whether or not they have the maturity to go out and actually do it. Helms at the line after the third on Darius Perry. Which turning into a tough Saturday for Darius Perry, isn't it? Second one good. Ryan the fans like, Coach, did you know that's three on him? I, I, I'll be happy to go back in and just do what I did in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go in and drop another six threes. I'm going to find my way right behind War in the scouting report. <laughs> Sutton. Now Perry. to shoot a little soft fall away and finally collected Daniels NC State with numbers Daniels all the way to the glass second basket for Devin Daniels excellent job shielding with his shoulder that time and creating that space to be able to finish oh, offensive, offensive foul on Kimball NC State's been aggressive at trying to get in front of Louisville ball handlers today. No question they have, but he's, you saw that Daniels drive, how he, his offhand kind of came back to made enough contact there to create separation and space to finish out in front. But to back to your point at the defensive end, we talked about Louisville and what they need to do right. and what the message was at halftime with a 15-point lead. If you're NC State, you're saying, hey, we got to turn up our pressure. And, fellas, we've got to execute and bring that same level of aggressiveness we have at the defensive end to the offensive end. I thought they allowed Louisville's defense to dictate how they played in their half court. By the way, McMahon's back on the floor now here in the second half for the first time. So Samuel Williamson who's checked in. And that ball last touched by the cards. It'll stay with the pack over in front of the NC State bench. So Ryan McMahon, he's already got a career-high six threes and a season-high 
18 in the ball game. The proverbial half gun will travel. <laughs> Ellums trying to fight his way to the basket. Daniels doing the dirty work and scoring again. He has a bit of toughness he brings to Kevin Keats's lineup. We've seen it in the last couple of possessions. Will it become infectious for his teammates that are out there with him right now? Kemble for Enoch against Funderburg. Enoch reset a couple times, traveled. Sean Hall right there with the whistle off the baseline. I'm not sure the number six team in the country is going to give you many chances, Sean. If you're NC State, you might want to take advantage. Daniels misses their war of the rebound. Here's war of the catch. Baseline. He, sh he shuffled his feet as well. Yep. That should have been a travel. And there was no need for it. Just turn and be on balance. There's Bryce. Another pull up. Knocked it down. C.J. Bryce, second field goal. That brings the crowd back to life on this 8-0 run. We'll pack to within nine. McMahon. Kick for Kimball out front. Look at there. Just the 10th three of the year for Fresh Kimball. And Coach Matt calls the time pushing somebody. Sometimes it's that, and more importantly, it's that mental toughness. Can you sustain your effort over, in this case, what would be a 20, set, a 20 minute second half? Three by Bryce, but hold the phone here. Score the three. And a foul is going to be called. Coach Mack is the was called before the shot was released. Right. Well, as long as you're in the act of shooting, it doesn't matter. So he was in the act of shooting. Therefore, the shot is good. The foul is on Enoch away from the ball, and thus an extra possession for NC State. And Bryce ends up with all five points because he slaps the Thunderbird miss back into the hoop for his fourth field goal. By the way, NC State's got seven from C.J. Bryce, who is returned to form seemingly. You mentioned him off the top. His struggles 0 for 12 the last two games. He needs to get going. Daniels defending McMahon. 11 to shoot. Here's Kimball. Louisville might need Jordan Wara here. They get a basket. They needed him. And guess what? They got him. Eight for Wara on just his second field goal, though, Sean. He can turn it on in a hurry. And one of the things I think NC State's done a great job today is taking him out of transition. They have not allowed him to get out in the open floor and get those transition dunks. Markel Johnson for Bryce, catch and shoot. And one. Welcome back, C.J. Bryce. When you get caught watching the ball, you pinch, you overhelp, you lose where your man is, and you make contact. That's exactly what happened for Jordan Wara. Bryce able to get his feet set, and the late closeout and the contact will get him to the free throw line. An explosion in the last minute and a half for C.J. Bryce. He's got the last eight. Make it nine NC State points. Five point game. David Johnson back on the floor with Sutton McMahon, who's been quiet in the second half. Williams and Samuel Williamson. McMahon from deep. Williamson the rebound, second chance for the Cardinals. Much more difficult look that time by McMahon. Staying attached. Entry for Williams. Working on Thunderbird. Jump hook and one for Big Malik Williams. Excellent call 
by Coach Mack to get the ball down low. The crowd is starting to buzz, have an energy. You isolate with perimeter players for round one, and you pound the ball inside and let your big man go to work. First foul on the Wolfpack here in the second half. Three-point trip for Malik Williams, his first points. Another guy that doesn't have to score to be effective for Louisville. But when, you, when he does, it's almost bonus points. Johnson working against David Johnson. Here's Funderburg. Flipped it up and in. Tough shot. DJ Funderburg second field goal. Pretty competitive little ball game at the block now, Farnham. Place is woke up a little bit. 11 for Funderburg. This is not that sleepy first 10 minutes we had, right? Riddled by turnovers and fouls. <laughs> okay, I said sleepy. It might have been sloppy. Williamson kicks out. Malik Williams, a standing three. Wow. Six bonus points. That is his fifth three of the year. The lead back to nine for number six, Louisville. Helms tries to answer. McMahon trying to find an alley. Little scoop off the glass. He just wanted to prove that he, he doesn't just make three-point shots. That was crafty right there. 20 for McMahon. Something you work on in the driveway in Sarasota. It looked like he was just probing and was going to pull it out, and then all of a sudden flipped it up. Daniels. Counters for NC State with a triple. He's got seven and a half. Ten in the ball game. The freshman Johnson lost it and turned over. Too fast. Sometimes you think you're you're more out in front than you are. So watch this. Look like a little probe, like he's gonna kick it out, and then all of a sudden it's a it's a one power dribble, short little dribble, and then the scoop. Watch this dribble right there. That's the one. That that <laughs> dribble where he turns the corner and the little flip. You work on it in the driveway, right? I should have worked on that in the driveway. Take a point game. 15 to shoot, and here's Funderburk and Williams on a matchup again. DJ Funderburk recovered and scored on by Mobile's, Jericho Hellum. Mobile's not boxing out the way they should. I mean, they, they have given up three or four offensive rebounds and second chance points here in the second half. Got to finish your possession. If you're NC State, you got to see that and you got to keep attacking. Every time the shot goes up, go get it. Malik Williams. Now backing Thunderbird in again. Can't score. Daniels. Pass Sutton and the basket. Four point game. Here we go. Sutton strong to the basket. NC State doesn't have a turnover. And they've gotten four offensive rebounds, and they've turned them into six second chance points. You're not giving away possessions, and you're creating extra possessions. Daniels in traffic. Here's Bates with 10 to shoot. And a little reverse up and under, and it fell off the front rim. Quite sure where that was going to end up, but darn thing almost fell in. There's a nice runner by Johnson. So frustrating it's got to be for NC State. They cut this game to four, and then back-to-back -back possessions. It's drive right down the middle of the lane, and you get a layup and one, and then a four-foot jump shot off glass. Possession will stay with the Wolfpack. Don't forget, three top 20 teams highlight our full day of Saturday college hoops on ESPN. Number 13, Kentucky. Number 17, Auburn, headed your way at 6 o'clock tonight from the Auburn Arena in a sonic blockbuster. And then number 9, Duke and Syracuse at the Dome tonight, 8 Eastern.
on ESPN and the ESPN app. Kentucky kind of rounding into form a little bit. This is going to be a big test on the road against Auburn. Oh, Nick there's Richards, your guy now. Man, he has been putting in work over the last eight games. Look at those numbers. Rebounded by McMahon off the Beverly miss. Sutton trying to finish, skips it back. McMahon buys time three. Got oh. it. How about that? You get the ball about seven feet away, and you're like, no, 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 no. We're going to back this thing up even further. 11 is the Louisville lead. Johnson answers. Eight for Markel Johnson on his third field goal. See, I know you're a big time shooter because you're just still rolling on what McMahon just did. <laughs> Got some savvy to him today. Ryan McMahon won off his career high. He's got seven threes in his eight field goals. In traffic, tried to bounce it through, got kicked away. It will stay with five to shoot at the Louisville end of the floor. That's just wide open. Take that shot. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to take it back and drop it in. The bench knew exactly what he's doing. And then other end of the floor, Markel Johnson says, all right, I'll see you and I'll match it. Johnson thought about the lob. Here's Enoch. And McMahon, the shot clock went back to 20. That's just poor awareness. Right. The shot clock had gone back to 20. Because the kick ball. Right. And that's where you need somebody out on the court saying, hey, every time there's an out of bounds underneath, everybody should know how much time's left on the shot clock. Unforced error. Beverly couldn't handle the delivery of the rock from Markel Johnson. Now Kevin Keats can live with tempo and pressure and hustle and things of those nature. What he can't live with is the unforced stuff and he's seen more of that here recently. It's it's the value of every possession. Your margin when your margin is a little bit thinner than it's been. And look they've had injuries. They've had guys out of time practices with only seven scholarship players recently. Your margin starts to shrink. Your value has to increase. Kimball loops through Williamson. Took some contact. Bates got a block. And the Wolf back into the front court. Eight and a half to go in Raleigh. Eight point game. Thunderbird calling for it. A foul on Sutton. That'll be his fourth. Funderburg does a tremendous job of being active, moving his feet, and keeping himself wide. And when you get wide, and especially in today's college basketball, you defensive player starts putting his hands on an offensive player every single time. Yep. They're going to hit you. Not the height, it's the width sometimes, right? Daniels. Pitch down, nice catch. Funderburg couldn't finish. Rolled off the rim for Enoch. Kimball trying to break down Funderburg. A lot of dribbling, not a lot of passing on this possession. Kimball still dribbling. McMahon against Beverly. Check foul on Braxton Beverly, a junior from Hazard, Kentucky. Cards will have the ball as well as we rejoin you from PNC Arena with Sean Farnham, West Durham, and our great crew. Ryan McMahon leads the villain scoring. Paul being Cardi sent me his scouting report from a couple years ago. Says, you know, four-star shooter Farnham. Heck, coach, you were right on that one. <laughs> Kimball, not a four-star shooter, but here in the second half, he's got a pair of triples. I, double I, figures. I expect his recruiting bio sent, texted to me from Paul being party soon as well. <laughs> Lamar Fresh Kimball, the grad transfer from St. Joe's, native Philadelphian, pushes the lead to 11. Lead got down to four. I mean, we talked about the level of importance for NC State on their home floor. You gotta find a way to knock off one of the top three in the ACC this year. Bryce has had a good second half. And knocked out of bounds, last touch Manny Bates. 
And it will go to the cards with 7.01 to go. You guys are talking about the Big 12. I, you know, one of the narratives we have in college basketball this year is there's not an elite level team. Right. That's false. There is one. They're Baylor. It, it may not be a traditional name that you're accustomed to seeing being elite. You knock off five top 25 teams. You go into Allen Fieldhouse and you win. Sure. And they're really three minutes away in Alaska Anchorage. Anchorage, Alaska, rather, excuse me. Early of, in the year. Of knocking off Washington early in the year yeah. from being undefeated right now. They're fantastic. Defend, rebound. Jared Butler's been sensational. Wara in traffic. Double figures now for Jordan Wara on his third goal. Like the fact that he went down low, didn't stay out on the perimeter. It's not been a great shooting afternoon. Johnson lost it, and it will stay with NC State. With 21 to shoot and 6.28 to play. Louisville has got 27 road wins in the last six years. It's the most in that stretch among any ACC school. And it's not a name you would think of when you think of, wait, wait, who's got the most road wins the last six years? You go Carolina, Duke, Virginia, not Louisville. But that's the case. And trying to get 28 here today. And they're eighth in a row. Helms will be tagged for that. Great ball movement that time. McMahon was clapping. He wanted the ball quickly because he knew where Jordan Wara was. Similar to the same situation where Wara fouled Bryce. Right. Wara wasn't able to get the shot off that time. Contact came out of bounds underneath. Well, this was a 15-point game at halftime. Got cut all the way down to four. Now it's back to 13, Sean. Tell you, when games on the road, you don't panic. You know there's going to be some teams, make, they're going to make a run at you, right? NC State came out, started making a run. Daniels ignited them. Bryce got, kept it going. And Louisville has been able to withstand that and now get to the other side of that run and start to extend this game back out. War with free throws on the Wolfpack foul, their fourth. And the first of the two good. What do you like most about Jordan Wara's game here, Sean? Today, it's been a little bit more of a struggle than it normally is, but he's so good in the open floor in transition. Getting out in front of everybody, runs rim to rim extremely hard. He can space the floor, as we mentioned off the top, the best three-point shooter by percentage in the conference. Uh, and he rebounds the ball well. Yep. That's seven of them today to go with 12 points now. Ball got knocked away. Bryce tried to recover. Scramble on with 14 to shoot. Kimball closed nicely. And off the glass, Bryce finds it. Good balance that time by Bryce. I thought maybe he took one extra bounce and was going to go into the shot blocker, but he created enough space by fading back ever so slightly to get that off the glass. He's got 15 points, 13 of them here in the second half. And watch this on the, on the kick out. A little scramble situation, and as he gathers himself and gets past the first defensive player, you have a shot blocker coming over. Just enough of a fade, and that little shot fake throws the shot blocker enough to get that off the glass and drop it in. Well, Kevin Keats' his club, 14 and 7 overall, 5 and 5 through the first half of the 20 game ACC schedules, lost two straight and split their last six. But Keats is two and one in this building as the Wolfpack head coach. In the nine games leading into the day against top 10 teams. You saw one of them here a year ago. They turned over Auburn, I think, 25 times on that game a year ago, December. And won that contest. You see, the 70 point barrier has become a thing for the Wolfpack, too. We have numbers for everything. Yeah, we do. Yep. Handy information. <laughs> Kimball has hit a couple of threes here in the second half. So don't discount him on the perimeter. Six to shoot. Skip in the corner for Wara. Sidestep, triple. And knocked out of bounds, Thunder Burke. It will stay with the cards. Don't forget Sports Center tonight after Duke Syracuse. John Butchagross, John Anderson. They'll break down the Sixers Celtics plus our crew in Miami. The very latest news in the countdown to Super Bowl 54 and inside the 
Pro Football Hall of Fame class. Sports Center after college hoops tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app. Who do you have tomorrow? Uh, I know you're not going to like this, but I like Kansas City. Not talking to you for the rest of the game. That's what I thought. <laughs> I think it'll be a really good game, though. I think it'll be a really good game. Ball lost out of bounds by Funderburk. It'll go to the cards. I was born and raised in the I know where you were born Montana. and raised. I know you said it Young last night. Rice. Yeah. John Taylor. Oh, he's Roger good. Craig. Dwight Clark. Ronnie Lott. Like Bill Ring. Oh, that's about Tom that Rathman. There you go, Bill Ring. Nice call. <laughs> I just, something about Patrick Mahomes, man. It's also something about Jimmy G. They don't lose when he's their quarterback. I saw him lose in December. Here is uh, Kimball on the drive. That ball got... Knocked out. Eight to shoot, McMahon. No. Got to flick that one. Yeah. Got to rush it. By the way, Taekwon Dean has the single game three point mark in Louisville history. Anytime you can roll Taekwon Dean out there, it's important too. And an unforced error, Danvers just couldn't handle it. That's the stuff right there that's grinding Kevin Keats in this little two game skid. That is just a pass to the wing. Yep. Take your eye off of it. They, you just let roll right by your leg and out of bounds. You'll like this. I got a football coach at one time told me after a loss, he said, Wes, it's details. We got to make layups. Yep. Well, with Kevin Keats, all they got to do is line up and convert third and one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Seriously. Just, just, just keep, line up right, snap the ball, and convert third downs. Well, Detail game. You think that's all they're missing? Details? I can't believe you brought up the Falcons game. Under four to go. 13 point game. Oh, McMahon. A details piece there. And foul going to be called, I believe, on NC State by Allen Fieldhouse in the Big 12 today. Great day to call it. That's a crazy day so far in the Big East. Villanova loses at home to Creighton. Seton Hall loses to Xavier. A crazy season so far in college Ooh. basketball. And if it's the precursor to what March could be, Sean, can't wait. Oh, it might be the wildest three weeks we've seen in the sport in a long time. That ball on the entry from Kimball hit the underside of the basket. That'll go to NC State. Here's a look at the AP poll. You'll we'll see the Ville at six, Florida State. Team five. Team I focus on San Diego State. Haven't, haven't lost. Neutral site wins over Creighton, Iowa. Malachi Flynn, their point guard. Three to one assist to turnover ratio. And you talk about efficiency. Year in and year out, defensively, that's been a great, great squad. They're fifth in the country in defensive efficiency. They're 11th in the country in offensive efficiency this year. That's the big difference. They are legitimate. Williams, dunk rubbed out. 13-point game just ahead of three minutes. Three left short by Markel Johnson. So Kimball, Wara, McMahon, Williamson, and Malik Williams on the floor for Louisville. Block is your friend. Utilize it right now for Louisville. No need to feel sped up or rushed at all. They had McMahon on the outside, and they missed him. They both went with the roller. McMahon was wide open. Here's Daniels against Samuel Williamson. Tough shot in the war of the rebound. Or Jordan Warren may not have scored it today, but he has boarded it. One rebound shot, I believe, of a, a double-double. It'd be quiet, too, wouldn't it? Relatively speaking to what you expected. Well, comparatively speaking to a 37 point game. Yes. Yeah <laughs> Markel Johnson ahead for Bryce here Jericho Helms state looking for a three And Malik Williams lost it with Daniels and last touch by Devin Daniels Now Dwayne Sutton with four fouls is checking back in. Kevin Keats wanted a foul on Louisville there, principally on Malik Williams. 
And Malik Williams, before that last timeout, seemingly tweaked his right ankle, yeah. retied his shoe, and then Coach Mack checked on to make sure he was okay. Uh, they've gone to the table here, and I don't know if this happens. Has to do with the ball going out of bounds. Yeah, they're, they're checking yep. to make sure. Double it's check. Under two minutes, they can check and make sure that they got the call right. So, Randy Stein, Sean Hall, with Ted Valentine observing as well. We get a chance to show you. Boy, that's call on the floor said it belonged to Louisville. Not sure I see enough there to reverse it. I think it stays. Yeah. This is the best angle we have. We're looking at Daniel's left hand here, 24 in the white. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. It stays. Cards, by the way, get Wake Forest Wednesday night at the Yum Center. NC State goes to Miami. My feeling is this. If if we look at it and officials are looking at it and they're going, man, I, I don't know. That's tough. Just stick with what you got. Let's go. Right? Keep the simplicity of it. Yeah. You're going to reverse the call. You should be able to go over there and look at it pretty quick and go, yeah, no, that, that's, that's not right. We messed that one up. Here's McMahon. Oh. He clutched on one, the bench wanted him to cut it loose. A smart play though. 12 to shoot against Bryce foul. and CJ Bryce the foul. And, and, and that's a needless foul. You've played defense for 20 seconds or 19 seconds and you're standing in front of Ryan McMahon. He's not going to have a shot that's going to come off his fingertips in that moment and you just reach in for no apparent reason. State one off, putting Louisville at the line with 93 seconds left. I don't really like this Louisville team. I think at the end of the year, you can see them down in Atlanta easily. Williams, the punch for his third field goal, all eight second half points for Malik Williams. And, and you're looking at a game, by the way, where Perry didn't play his best. Johnson was productive, but not outstanding you know Wara wasn't his efficiency numbers aren't the same as what we've seen over the course of this whole entire season yet you come on the road with a team in North Carolina State that's trying to bounce back from a loss to North Carolina right and protect their home floor and get a signature victory moving forward and you've handled business it's impressive what coach Mack has been able to do Thunderbird at the line Sean the other thing too when you look at Chris Mack they're averaging 25 points from the bench in the ACC. Yep. Well, they, they went out and got Ryan McMahon to throw a 23 in today off the bench. I mean, they put the depth we were talking about in the first half. That's a difference maker in the tournament for sure. Well, what you can't afford in the tournament is what we saw in the first 10 minutes today. The turnovers. Right? The turnovers you cannot afford. In the NCAA tournament, that will bite you. You will take a loss and you will go home. But as you mentioned, the depth of this team and the options on this team to be a score, the options on this team, but yet the, the connectivity at the defensive end, I think, is equally important. You talk about the production offensively, but are you still as connected defensively as you need to be? By the way, substitution for Louisville. This is uh, Josh Nickelberry checking into the ball game for McMahon, who had a whale of a day. Nickelberry, by the way, played his ball at Northwood Temple Academy in Fayetteville, North Carolina, about an hour or so down the road. And nice touch by Chris Mack to get him in the ball game here in his home state in the final minute. And he's a young guy they're excited about. Travel on the road, pick up a victory. Good job, good week for Louisville. Two road wins, get back home. And 10 and 1 in the ACC ahead of, at least for the time being, Florida State and Duke.
What an interesting statement for the cards who, by the way, get Wake Forest and then Virginia a week from today. Nickelberry, second triple of the year. He's like, yeah, hey, I was watching Ryan McMahon do this, coach. Mind if I try? Yep, 77-57. That'll make his family and friends happy. Final 10 seconds. C.J. Bryce the miss. And Daniels can't corral it. It'll belong to Louisville, who can dribble it out. And they'll be 19-3 and 10-1. and, 10 and 1. Wow. Inbounds it is. Chris Mack and the Cards are winners. They beat Kevin Keats Wolfpack by 20. Great to be with Sean.